this great puzzle that um, that Pamela has been talking about. So a couple of days ago, um, we spoke about the great low of the stomach and how the the messages of the divine, the instruction as to what to become interested in, um, comes in through the solar plexus, which is what gives us our gut feeling, and it moves up to the heart so that you can, so that we can, um, you know, almost crystallize it in the shen to, um, you know, to to shine light with uh, speech and with eyes, and. And then Pamela said, well, hang on, I, I feel that trajectory going the other way too. Is it possible there's a conversation going along there, going on in there? And that was a really fascinating thing because I hadn't thought about that. The way I think about the great law of the stomach is that it's like a, like a spring, you know. So you go up to the top. If I go up to the top of this mountain here, there's a spring right at the top. And it's literally this most incredible water just bubbling out of the out of the ground it's like a gift and it's you know you, you don't have to give you're not obligated to give back to it in fact you're not supposed to you know it's just a it's just a, a gift without without reciprocation and that's the way I've been thinking about the great law of the stomach anyway Andrew and I had a conversation about it to try to work it out and and Andrew's theory is that perhaps Pamela is feeling the action of the pericardium, which which does this, it goes, the pericardium begins at REN 22 under the armpit and then it, it visits the heart and it goes down to um, the lower jowl. And this trajectory of the pericardium, which has to go through the diaphragm, so a tight diaphragm means a loss of, uh, regulation of emotions so the pericardium channel that channel is responsible for managing the emotions managing stress generating empathy feeling in balance that's all the job of the pericardium the pericardium is supposed to keep everything calm so that the heart is free to do its job and um so what andrew was theorizing was that She's feeling, I can't see you, Pamela, but I know that you're there, that Pamela's um, feeling that action. Oh, you don't have to feel, turn your camera on, it's okay. <laughs> She's, that, that you're feeling that, that that movement, the pericardium channel going from the heart to the diaphragm, and that gives a sensation in the solar plexus. And some of us do feel that if you lie down and you've been experiencing stress, there's this strange feeling of the heartbeat in the solar plexus itself. That's the pericardium channel trying to penetrate down to the lower jaw to anchor the chi so that, um, so that you, we can regain a sense of groundedness. So um, the point that, so the, the points that we would need to do to free up this other direction so that there's this, um, you know, improved, uh, improved regulation of emotions, which is the antithesis of what we saw yesterday in Washington DC, would be to focus on this descending trajectory, this descending part of the pericardium primary channel which goes from REN 17 to the lower jowl in an unspecified point. So whenever something is connecting to the lower jowl and you want to create that anchor, you would choose any point in the lower jowl. It doesn't really matter. It could be REN 1, it could be REN 4, it could even be one of Jeffrey's favorites is REN 6, which I think is what we should do today, REN 6, um, C of Chi. And so, if we imagine that we're connecting REN17 down into the lower jowl in order to draw away from the heart via the pericardium, um, tension that's preventing the heart opening and being free. So that would be the ripple today, would be the ripple that we would be putting out into humanity would be one of 
sanity. <laughs> sanity which I think is apt given what happened here yesterday. Thanks so much for being here. I really mean it. I know I say it every day, I really mean it. And uh, let's get to work.